For whatever you sow, you'll reap. That and that only what a man sows will he reap. As he sows to the Spirit, he'll reap from the Spirit. As he sows to the flesh, he will reap condemnation. Lord, I thank you that tonight you have your hand out to each and every soul here. Lord, so that those of us that may not be too strong tonight, Lord, can grasp firmly onto your hand. Look into your eyes right now and say, Sorry, Lord. Thank you. You're here. You are ever, ever present in a time of need. You're closer than a brother, dearer than a sister. Hallelujah. A father to the fatherless. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So grasp a hold of the hand of the Lord tonight. Resolve in your heart not to let go ever. Let Him guide you through the, the dark things. Let Him guide you through the hard things. Because does not the light push the darkness away? So if those of you are maybe in darkness now, as you invite in the light, the darkness cannot succeed. It holds no mysteries. It doesn't beckon the righteous, but the light beckons the righteous. And the boldness that comes with the righteous is beckoned by the light. And the light precedes them and goes before them to push away all the darkness. So what happens when we light a light? Do we put it under a table? No, we put it high in the house so those who come in can see it. Hallelujah. I wonder and contend for the faith that's in the light. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Great and mighty the works of the Lord. Great and mighty those who walk in His justness and His righteousness. Who take a hold of His power and pour it out on the earth like sweet waters tumbling down into victory after victory. Pulling out strongholds, taking away the darkness with the light. Replacing those things that might have been a deception with the reality and the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Resurrection life is ours, children. It's our inheritance. Grasp a hold of the hand of the Lord tonight. Grasp hold. For those who need to repent, do it quickly. It's a forgotten thing from then. God does not remember your past no more. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You come to clothe the ugly, the desperate, the despicable, and wash them. Thank you, Lord. You've given me that opportunity. And thank you, Lord. You've not let go, but considered me a son and kept a hold on me. Thank you, Lord. Father, I speak for every person here tonight, Lord. For if they not utter it from the lips, I'll speak, Lord. And I'll say, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'll give you praise for your resurrection life that you poured out on each and every person. And Lord, even your protections on the children here tonight because of the salvation of the family. Thank you, Lord, that they don't even have to make a decision at this stage, Lord, that you protect them. That even the, the husband who goes away by the virtues of a godly woman has your hand of protection upon him. Not as an excuse or a reason to sin, but just you're such a merciful God. And I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for those that have gone astray from amongst us, Lord. Lord, because I know that the work you started in them, you'll finish it, Lord. And their names are written in glory, just like ours is as we've come around your table to banquet with you tonight, Lord. And Father, we're not the ones that wouldn't come to the banqueting table. Father, we've chosen to come and eat at your table tonight. And we say thank you tonight, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we, we gorge at your table tonight, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We eat and we drink and we gorge tonight, Lord, at your wonderful presence. Thank you, Father. For tomorrow we go out, Lord. And it may be a bit dry, so we need to fill up tonight. And I thank you, Lord. Without measure, you pour out the royal wine tonight. Hallelujah. And Lord, you always save the best to last. Always. When everything else has run out, Lord, you come in with the best. When we say, Lord, I can't take any more, you come in with the best. You come in with the very best. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. There's always more for those who had a need. There's always the best for those that are on their knees. 
those sliding behind, there's always the best there for them. Thank you, Lord. Who knows your ways? They're higher than my ways. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Blessed are the pure at heart, for they shall see God. Take your pure heart your pure heart tonight and look into the face of the Lord thank you Lord because he's shining upon you tonight saith the spirit hallelujah resurrection life thank you for the prophetic tonight Lord thank you for healing in your wings tonight Lord, we choose to dwell in the secret place of the Most High tonight. We take healing from your wings tonight, Lord. I see healing in your wings. For the children of light. Oh, healing in his wings. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for signs and wonders tonight. Thank you for signs and wonders. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. One time I was up in Toronto, Canada, and I was... I'd just come back to the things of God, and the God of the Bible was not the God that I was worshipping in the church church was at that particular time had a lot of legal things going on and the only sign was the one on the door and the only wonder was that we went there every Sunday and so I heard about revival up in Toronto Canada and I sold a whole lot of things that I had in the shed in the garage all my best tools I sold them all because I didn't have any cash for the first time in my entire life at the age of 38 I flew on an aircraft to the other side of the world. I've never been outside of Australia. And I went to this place up in Toronto, and I still had some serious baggage. But God was drawing me there. Is He drawing you tonight? Praise the Lord. Just be obedient and do it, whatever He's asking you to do tonight. So I went to this place, and I saw many signs and miracles, and I learned how to drink a little bit in the Holy Spirit, and I saw... And I saw people right in the Spirit doing godly things. And I saw the Holy Ghost move amongst thousands of people. And it was what the Bible said it should happen when believers gather together. And one night, I was feeling really like I felt I used to smoke cigarettes and I was still smoking at that time. And I went outside and I sat at the bus shelter because I was ashamed. It was two o'clock in the morning. And I lit up a cigarette, and I was really enjoying that cigarette, as those of us who smoke or smoked know that smoking is an enjoyable pastime when you're doing it. And all of a sudden, at 2.15 in the morning, a bus pulled up in front. A man got off it, sat down beside me, and said, I've been up in the mountains. And you know, I've been talking to God and God said, it doesn't matter what you're doing, He still loves you. It doesn't matter because He's bigger than your problems. It doesn't matter because there's a day of deliverance for everybody. And He didn't know I was struggling with smoking and a hundred other issues. But I closed my eyes and put my head down and all this took about 90 seconds. And then another bus pulled up and he was gone. That night I spoke with an angel. You don't get two buses at 2.15 a.m. in the morning. And I knew I'd, I'd had an encounter with God. But what I want to share with you tonight, that there's a day of deliverance for every man. And don't let religion pull you down and make you feel condemned. Because there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Who endeavor to walk after the Spirit. Just do your best to walk after the Spirit and God will do the rest for you. There's a day of deliverance. You've got to know when it comes. I went back to Australia some weeks later. I went down to Pensacola on the same trip. 
I also sat under Rodney Howard Brown, Christian Harfouche. I got baptised down there. I was still smoking. I went back to Australia. I used to smoke an ounce and a half of dope every week. I didn't want to smoke that anymore. I tried to light a joint and that thing just fell out the window of the car. And 10 days after getting back to Australia, God said, okay, today's the day. You will not smoke anymore after today. And not one single time from that moment on did I feel like a cigarette. Because there's a day of deliverance for every single man who has his heart after the things of God. Now listen, children, this is really important. It doesn't matter what you're going through. If you really have a heart to follow the Lord, He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He will not pull you down, but He will deliver you. You need to chase after Him as a deer pants after the waters. You've got to pursue Him. You can't give up. Those who give up are giving up because they don't truly believe that they're His son and His daughter. There's some of you struggling with things here tonight. Just press in. Don't give up. And when He says to you, now's the time, he will deliver you instantly and He will get all the glory, not the nicker baits, not the counselling. And you will stand up in front of people in 11 years' time or 12 years' time and you'll say exactly what this man's saying to you tonight, that God will deliver you. He will not share His glory with anyone and He wants to pour it out on His children. So be encouraged. Do not feel condemned. Repent. Turn towards the Lord with all your heart and He will deliver you. He will deliver not just you, but your family. Stand in the gap and get serious about the things of God. I've come from the other side of the world to be serious about the things of God, to share with you that God will deliver you out of all your fears, your trials, your tribulations. He will take poverty and He will smash it on the rocks that was your past life. He'll build up a temple around about you. I see onyx. I see stones of glory and shining beauty. That is your life, your new life in Him that no one can pull down and destroy. He is the rock. He is the foundation. He wants to build you up. He wants to extol. He wants to make you something special. There's no doubt in God's mind. We've just read the Scriptures straight from the heart of God. He is a God of mercy. He's a God of joy. He will allow you to be tempted, but He will never let you down. He will not push you in the ditch. He will pull you out of the ditch. He will help you through your schooling. He will help you when you want a new job. I got a note in the offering two nights ago saying, listen, I've lost my job. Pray for me. Well, I prayed for you if you're here tonight and you have a new job coming, you need to lay down three days of your, of your week. You need to sacrifice three days to someone who really needs some help. And God will open a door for you as you lay it down, as you give up your time for someone else. God is in the background. He's working a miracle for your life. Hallelujah. The two job offers for you is coming your way. Praise the Lord. Keep offering. Offer into somewhere else. Help somebody else out. Go next door and say, can I help you? Hallelujah. We are the head because God chose it that way. Our covenant is absolute and complete and it covers every single need. Both past, present and future. You know that God was looking after our past. He's cared for us from before the time we were born. He's kept us alive. Hallelujah. It's very exciting. The resurrection life that the Lord has given to us and the covenant we have with Him. Hallelujah. Every man's in a process of cleansing. We're preparing for the marriage feast. Hallelujah. We're in preparation. We're a work in progress. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Thank you, Lord.
gives pleasure to the Lord to give the keys of the kingdom to his children. Here are the keys to my house. Go and use them. Here's a set of keys. It's got your name on it. Take them. I don't see you taking them. Take the keys in your heart. They're very valuable. You don't leave your car keys lying around. Don't leave these lying around. Use them to share them to others. Open up your doors to others. Hallelujah. There's a million, million people waiting out there to come in. You got the keys. Let them in. Tell them how good God is. Thank you, Lord. How great is our God. How great is our God. How great, how great is our God. Worship the Lord, everyone. How great is our God. We'll sing it to Him. How great is our God. Sing it to Him. How great, how great is our God. thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We turn to you with all our hearts tonight. Hallelujah. We turn to you with our hearts tonight. Glory to the King of Kings. Thank you, Lord, you release us tonight. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Genesis 26, Isaac, chosen one, 
Laughter was his name. But God has made us to laugh. Thank you, Lord. There was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went into Abimelech, the king of the Philistines, under Gerar. So Isaac went down to the world. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Shashorn in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee, for unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries. And I will perform an oath which I swore unto Abraham thy father. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven and will give unto thy seed all these countries and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes and my laws. And Isaac dwelt in Gerar. And then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. Those who walked in the name of the Lord Jesus, have favor on their lives, even when they make mistakes. You'd be surprised the world will fear you if you confess that Jesus is Lord and turn from your sin. God will bless you and your herds and your children and your servants, whatever they are, whether it's your car that serves you or your washing machine that serves you, Whatever serves you, God will bless it. How Jesus himself, the son of the living God, as we are sons and daughters of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's in the Bible. See? And fire is what we need to purge us, clean us. The blood washes us. Amen. But the things that are deep, that the word convicts us of, we need the anointing to come and smack it out of us at the appointed time, the appropriate season, as was prophesied earlier. Hallelujah. So if you're wondering why I'm always saying fire, because I want you to be set free. That's part of my job. I want to see you freer and freer and freer from the things that hinder you. Of course, me as well, but I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about you. I'm in your face tonight, as usual. The fire of God burns up the dross in our lives. When you find gold in the ground, it's gold. Amen? But it's got other stuff in it. It's still gold, but it's got other stuff. It's got impurities. And God took you from being clay and turned you into gold when you're born again. But in saying that, there's still some things in there that need to be cleaned out. Or am I the only one who needs a bit extra polishing on the side? I can see all your halos shining there. We can turn all the lights off and we'll all glow in the dark. Amen? Let's go to Malachi chapter 3. We'll start at verse... One, why not? Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple. That's you and me. We are temples. Malachi is a prophetic book about what was coming. It was like three or four hundred years, something, not, you know, three hundred years at least between Malachi and John the Baptist, who was the next prophet. 
Long time coming. Come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant, whom you delight in, behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like full of soap. And it shall be, he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Hallelujah. Now, when we're born again, we're declared righteous. Amen. Okay. From that point on, everything we do moving towards Christ is counted to us under righteousness when we do it according to the covenant. We spoke of the covenant in verse 1. Okay? According to the way God would have us do things, the plan, the map, the roadway, the freeway. This is the way we go. As you do things along this road to please the Lord, your righteousness becomes more and more apparent. I'm not saying you get more righteousness, because it's not saying that, but it becomes clearer and clearer because you become more and more Christ-like. Hallelujah. I'm going to read that verse again because really I want it to sink in. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. Silver, silver represents salvation. God is a purifier of your salvation, both in, in many ways. One, in cleansing you as a person, but also to increase your understanding of the value of your salvation. So you see clearer and clearer and clearer as time goes on. You never reach the point where you've arrived with God. You've started on a journey. Remember that show Kung Fu, David Carradine? Was, he headed off into the wilderness and every week he fought somebody? Well, it's a little bit like that for us. It's funny how the world has these shows that are quite prophetic and the church goes like this at it. But, you know, it's a little bit like that. We have to fight battles along the way, you know. And the better equipped we are and the sharper we are and the better trained we are, the more enjoyable the battle to a warrior. He actually likes fighting. See, Jesus has given us huge advantage because he's given us all the keys. He's given us everything we need to get the job done and enjoy it. Not only that, but to storm the gates when, not of hell, we don't need to worry about that, but to storm into the gates of heaven, not just, oh, Jesus, I thank you, I made it. <laughs> no, it's like, be like Caleb, better than him because we're in Christ, and storm the gates of heaven when we're raised up to meet him in the air. It's like children who are happy to get home. They run in, they push the door open, they throw their school bag down on the ground, rip the shoes off, race inside, go into the fridge. Whereas we go into the arms of Jesus. Hallelujah. That's where it's at for us. Although you might get into heaven and go to the fridge. Glory to God. You can imagine how big it's going to be. You'll open the door and stand there and be just frozen. Or like this. Could be like that. I don't know. Praise the Lord. It's going to be pretty good. <laughs> 